We are speaking with uh, Kristen Baker, the founder and CEO of Telofilms.com, which is a kind of like a Netflix subscription program that focuses on lesbian and queer stories. That's it. That's it. That's pretty well done. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Been practicing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, what is it that inspired you to create Telefilms? Um, so, Tell's been around for about ten years now. Oh my gosh! And congratulations! Um, thank you. <laughs> and you know, the thing that really inspired us was, I think, number one, the frustration of the lack of lesbian content that was available and at the time it was just when we started tell it was when youtube was really starting to like become a thing and like people were like oh this this is actually like look at these numbers yeah. um and i think we were like my um original co-founder and i were just really frustrated because we only saw like if you typed in lesbian it was just like two chicks making out yeah. and there wasn't a lot of narrative story around it and you know, it was also right around the time that After Ellen was starting to, like, really become a force to be reckoned with and, like, show that there was, like, a big fandom out there and a following. And they started doing their vlogs and original content. And I was like, you know, I want to be part of that. Like, I want to be making stuff for my community and things that, like, I say yes to because, you know, there was just, like, a lack of you know, that, that happening. And it, it's funny because I was on with um, the Clexicon ladies today and we were talking about, you know, the, the, the success of, you know, the, um, the convention and what they're going to do next. And, you know, I started thinking back to like all of these like little tiny shows that we were watching over here. Thank again, thanks to after Ellen, cause mm -hmm. they were talking about it, but like, you know, bad girls and, um, and, uh, uh, skins and, you know, all these like shows that we were just trying to get as much content as possible. And I was just consuming as much of it and, and nice, really nice people in Europe from, you know, would post it online so that we could watch it because we couldn't get it in the oh, States. Yeah, and yeah, totally. So, you know, I think I was like, I am so hungry for this. Like, how can I help make more of it? Totally. Yeah. So um, we're going to get back to this, but you mentioned Clexicon. Can yeah. you give us any hints about what you guys were talking about? Um, you know, <laughs> I think we, yeah, we were talking about, um, you know, what might next year look like? How mm -hmm. could, um, you know, like getting an advisory board together and how we can just make it bigger and better and possibly do more of them. So we're yeah. really looking at, you know, kind of leaping it, I think it. I think it was more successful than even they thought it would be. I mean, I think it just kind of blew everyone's minds. Like, you know, there's over a thousand people here. Like, wow. And yeah. I think that you know, wanting to show that there is a space for this and an interest um, for this kind of of gathering. And so, yeah, they're looking at doing more and bigger and better and. Awesome. Um, so that's what we were talking about, yeah. Did you have a favorite thing about this past year? Um, I, I, I really liked seeing a lot of my friends who I'm not okay. always able to see. So that was really cool, and having them all in one space is really nice. And I loved, um, I, I loved doing the panels. There were some panels that I was able to do that I just was, like, so excited about and really – really loved oh good um so um yeah so I think that um yeah the panels were just awesome and yeah. I was kind of bummed because there were so many good ones that I wanted to watch and then but I was on them so totally. it was like this like you know the richness of having to choose which one to go to because there were so many fabulous ones absolutely yeah, I, I as someone who was there observing, I had the same thing. They were double booked, you know, pop into one and out and try out all the different ones. So, yeah, well, that's good. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. So back to Telefilms, mm -hmm. I uh, had the joy of reading your note to Netflix. 
um, for, I guess it was a little while ago, but um, yeah. it's very cool that you have been really in the forefront of developing media and like an online, I guess, online presence and online um, production. Um, yeah. So how does it, I mean, I also saw in the letter that you're like, I understand we're not Netflix. You guys have a lot <laughs> of <laughs> different things going for you, but how does it feel to be such an innovator and to be leading the way and setting an example for other people? You know, it's, it's, uh, I would love to think that Netflix is like watching what Tello <laughs> does. I know, I know they're not, but, um, in my, in my mind, they are. Go for it. Um, Right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know. It's, 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 it's kind of nice when an entity like Netflix does what you're doing. Cause you know, you've been doing it right. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, it's really just been, and I don't, I, I don't mean this in like, we're really the only company that's doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so sometimes when you're kind of alone on the island, you're like, you know, is this yeah, what, meaningful? Are we doing it right? Are we doing anything? You know what I mean? It's, and so, yeah, I think it's just kind of a validation of, yes, we're, we're doing it right. And, and clearly we sh can, can be doing things better and bigger to, to get the word out. You know, I think that's what we're always like striving to do is figure out how do we, you know, continue to let people know about us and like get the word out. And, and again, you know, we don't have $5 billion that we can put into, you know, original content and programming and, and marketing and things like that. And so we really have just done, done the best with what we, we could. And I think just continued to persist. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think, and, and I, I did, I, I can't remember if someone sent me that article or I read that article and I was just like, are you kidding me? Like I've been doing, you know, like we went yeah. to, like I said in the thing, like, you know, we went to the subscription model first. We went yeah. to the digital content model first. We went to producing our own original content first. So, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And, and, but it really, we're here still because we've been able to do it that way. Yeah. And, and it's, it's what we had to, had to do. So it's nice that what you had to do to survive ends up being what is probably the best thing and the best practice. Yeah. That is, that is kind of cool. That's kind of yeah. amazing, really. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you run this organization and then you also are a producer and a director. So yeah. I think a general title for you could just be mastermind. Um, <laughs> yeah, yes, I should put that on my business card. Thank you. <laughs> what is it like to have so much responsibility? And I guess, how do you balance out like your individual yeah. needs and taking care of a cast and a crew and the overall grand big picture of either a, a small production or the company, whatever example you want to use? Yeah, so you know, it's it's funny because I've, I've, I feel like although I've been plugging along and, and doing the things that I need to do with, with of course support, I have someone who helps support me with my social media. I have someone who helps support me with my website. Um, you know, I have people who, who create the lovely banners and, and images that, that you see. And so, you know, I think number one, I have a really good support team around me that can help do the things that I can't do, but I've, I'm actually just reading this book right now called the one thing. And it's really changed my perception and idea around how, how, I don't know. I feel like I kind of have been, it's, I guess, you know, not like the book comes, I think when you're ready to read it, you know, sure. and hear it. Yeah. And so it's been a, this amazing book that's helped me realize, cause sometimes I felt like, Oh, I have to do 50 things. You know, I have right, to do these right, 50 right. things and I'm just kind of juggling and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And the book is really about having, a goal, like that overarching goal, and then doing small incremental things to reach it. Like you don't have to do 50 things, but what's like the one thing that you can do today that's going to set you up so that you, instead of having to do the 50 things later on, you only need to do 10 things. And it's been an amazing way to focus sure. 
the work that I'm doing and going, what's going to make the biggest difference that I can put my energy and effort into today. And that's been awesome. And so I think, you know, on set, that's what you do. Like yeah. when I'm on set, the thing that I'm doing is trying to make sure everything is running on budget, on schedule and on time as a producer. As soon as I put my director hat on, when I directed Rally Para, I was able to bring in some creative collaborators who were amazing producers who I just was like, here is your job. Mm -hmm. And I was able to give like 70%, 80% of that away to them so I could focus on directing. And I didn't have to worry about those other things because I had people to do that where normally I would be doing that. I would be the person. I I had to let that go, which actually felt really, really good. And I was like, oh, okay. Because I I did all the pre-production work that you needed to do and like held – you know, the budget line, you know, I had my DP called me and was talking to me as a director and he goes, who's the line producer? I need to talk to them. And I was like, you are talking to the line producer <laughs> and no, you can't have, you know, this expensive thing. That you, want. you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, that's just how it kind of works. But then like once you're on set, you kind of have to give that over to someone else. Sure. Um, you know, and so, yeah, so that's, so when you're on set, like you're really just so hyper-focused on getting the production done. Yeah. But then outside of that, like, how can I apply that to what I do every day? So this book has just been um, uh, amazing, and it's it's been super, super helpful. And, and really kind of me figuring out, like, what is it that I want to do? You know, how mm-hmm. what is it that I want to focus on and in, in moving the needle and in, 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 in my creative career? So it's it's been sure. awesome. So what are your, so far, your measures for success in projects that you work on? Oh, well, I think the first one is, did I have people who want to work with me again? Did people have fun on set? Number one, did we finish it? (laughs) Which which is, seems to be, you know, a simple thing, but really it's like, did we complete everything we needed to complete? Yes. Um, Did people have fun doing it? And, you know, would those people come back? Uh, to, to, to work with me. Yeah. And, 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 and then you hope that people say yes to it on your website. Yeah. You know, you hope that you have a group of people who go, you know, yes, this is, this spoke to me or this was great or, totally. you know, thank you, you for doing recognized this. at the London brain dance festival just this last year mm-hmm. for, um, Maybell. Yeah. 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 Was that really exciting? It was, um, it was amazing. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was kind of like, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know that, um, I'm still believe when that happens. Like, I mean, I have the plaque and I have the, <laughs> you know, but, and, and I think I just, Bridget McManus is just a wonderful friend and she has been the biggest supporter creatively and just like, you know, word of mouth of Tello. And, Working with her was, uh, and, and winning that for Maybell, I think was really, really special mm-hmm. um, because it was this wonderful project that Bridget brought to me and we really like creatively came together and collaborated on it. And so, yeah, to win for that was just amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. That's really yeah. Cool. So when everyone watches, watching this interview Mm-hmm. Um, subscribes to Tello Films. After yes, learning thank you so much about it. What is the first thing they should watch? Maybell. Maybell. Bottom. I, definitely. I just think okay, it's cool. beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. We filmed it in Tennessee. Um, Fran and Bridget have wonderful chemistry. Um, it's this really nice kind of like like romance of this like you know it's it's just this classic like romantic drama. Yeah. You know, and there's some funny moments in it but I do that's what I that's what any <laughs> anyone who's dated me who <laughs> is like what should I go watch on tello I'm like watch Mabel first because that's what I directed um oh, awesome. and and it's worked like I've gotten good response from it so that's a nice <laughs> like line um nice <laughs> yeah uh exactly so, but I love I love I love Maybell. I love Nikki and Nora. I usually mm-hmm. tell people like go watch Nikki and Nora because the chemistry between Liz Vassie and Christina Cox is just like palpable and wonderful and awesome. um, yeah. So I think those are are kind of selfishly. 
the ones that I think are like really, really lovely. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's all good. Of course. It's all good. I know people will ask me like, what's my favorite? And I was like, that's like asking someone like, who's your favorite child? Right. You know, like <laughs> you have to be more specific, like which yeah. one was the most stressful to shoot or which one was the most fun or which right. one did you have? You know, I can tell those stories, but you can't go like, which one's your favorite? Because yeah. inevitably you're going to hurt someone who you've c- collaborated <laughs> with. They're and they're all special feeling. in their own way. They're all exactly. special in their own Exactly. They really are. They're like children. It's like, I love them all yeah. just in different ways and for different reasons. Yeah. And yeah. Totally. Um, well, before heading out, I just want to ask if you have any, like, your top suggestion for creative people and pursuing, pursuing their goals. What is, what is your advice? Yeah, you know, I get asked that often yeah. as, as you might imagine. Um, and I, I, I have to say, I always take a line from the Duplass, Duplass brothers who gave a speech at South by, I gave a keynote there. And I think that, and it's, it's the best advice ever. And it's what you have to just go and make things you have to, if you want to do something or be something, whatever that is, you have to go and do it. And you have to find people, and there are people out there who will support that thing that you want to go and do, but you have to go and do the thing. If you want to be a writer, write, like have scripts, watch, you know, read other scripts and write your own and get people to read them out loud so you can hear it. Get someone to shoot a small scene. If you want to be a director, go take your iPhone, like do always do something. Don't let the, the, the barrier to entry is just so small these days that you, there's no reason you can't get a camera or a smartphone or something that has a video recorder and make a story, tell a story in some way and find your tribe of people who you want to create that with. Yeah. Um, and that's possible and that's out there. And I think, you know, finding, watching something that you love that you want to say yes to and why, you know, kind of always looking at something with that critical eye. Um, and, and yeah, so just like go out and do it. I, I'm not a great writer. I, it's not some, but if you look in my credits, I've written things like I have mm-hmm. writing credits because I wanted to get stuff done. I had maybe a story or an idea yeah. and I thought I'll write this. I need someone to rewrite it and make it better. And I found that person who wanted to collaborate with me or who would give feedback, but you just have to keep doing it yeah. every day if possible every week. Um, yeah. Make, make, make your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Well, thank you so much, Kristen You're very Baker. welcome. Everyone, check out Tello Films. Um, thank you. And, yeah, I guess bye, everyone. Thanks for joining our conversation. Bye. <laughs>